sorry for the delay guys uh technical issues with the camera and whatnot so we're good to go now uh so this video i'm going to show you guys how we pre-cut uh film for flat glass jobs um if you guys don't pre-cut before you get to your jobs it is just such a pain in the butt especially if you have a film handler uh you got to bring the film handler you got to bring the ladder you got to get it set up then you got to take the measurements and then you got to cut it just takes a lot of time instead of getting just basically getting to the shop and getting going so uh, we went ahead and cut the uh, the the cut sheet from TintWiz. So as long as you put all the measurements in, then it'll tell you the dimensions of each one, the quantity amounts, and so forth and so forth. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine windows to cut today. So um, so we're, that's what we're gonna do. Let's see here and show you guys uh we did pieces of tape with a little with a little tail because we're going to roll the film and uh size quantity amounts and then that way we know what is what once we uh start cutting film so first step zachary come follow me sir i gotta go get the film is it this one it is this one the heavier. heavier one all right uh this is a uh, solar guards Pure View 35, this is their uh, their ceramic lineup. 72 inch, brand new piece of foam. Can you move that camera actually right in front here? Yeah, just lift it and walk. Walk, 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 there we go. Uh, Rotate it. The front is a lens, so you want to point it to me. There you go. Beautiful. And then tilt it down a little bit. Nope. Grab the, grab the arm behind right here. There we go. Yep. Should be good. All right. So we got a 72 inch roll on the film handler and uh, we're just going to go ahead and start cutting. We don't need the sleeve. I like to line up one side and keep this that side locked in and then just slide this side in. If you guys have never used a film handler before, uh, once you do use a film handler, it is the best thing in the world. Makes it so much easier to handle big pieces of film. Thank you, sir. Uh, before we get started, go ahead and roll it down. This film is, this is not a full 100 foot roll. I believe this is a 50 foot roll. So um, sometimes when you get a cut down roll, Thank you, sir. You have, end up getting not a straight edge, as you can see right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and slice that edge. Double check the, because we use the ruler here to help with our measurements. So always make sure that you're like butted up, right up against uh, the uh, the zero marker. That way you're you're not throwing off your measurements. Thank you, sir. You go ahead, just pull a little bit of excess and just cut. So we have a straight edge line right here. Boom. Thank you, sir. Start with uh, 31 by 68. Um, so you go from that trick, 47 by 68. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so where is the, the cut map? On your tablet. Yeah. So Solar Guard has a really cool website or app that uh, once you can, you can actually put in the the dimensions of the window film and the size of film that you're going to use, and it'll it'll pop out a uh, a cut map, so it can tell you the best way to cut out the film so that you don't waste as much film. You can be as efficient as possible. Pretty good, pretty good uh, feature of the app. I've I've never seen something like this before, but I've also haven't been getting as serious as I've been lately with uh, flat glass. So, um, if you guys don't know how to cut films efficiently uh, without any waste then this is definitely a good tool to use. So looks like we got nine windows. Uh, one, two, three, four, five of which are gonna have a split. This is a 72. Um, so we need to cut down to like a 44, which is gonna be a good size amount. Where's 44? Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll just save, we'll save this one. 
for any uh, you know spare square rolls. If you guys can save the excess, save it. Obviously, that's uh, you can use that for other jobs. Sometimes you uh, there is going to be waste with flat glass. What's that one measurement? Thirty by sixty-eight. Is that first? Uh, Thirty-one by sixty-eight. Oh, we could pull straight down. How many do we have? Three. Uh, no, we're going to have to pull down 31 and cut down 68. Yeah. So our first measurements, um, when you're doing flat glass cutting, so our measurement is 31 by 68, and we have a 72-inch roll. With flat glass, it doesn't matter which way, sideways, upside down, the diagonal, it doesn't matter because there's no direction. You don't shrink uh, like you do automotive. Um, so the idea is, is that we have a measurement that's 31 by 68. So is it better to, on a 72-inch roll, pull down 31? Or do we split it down the middle and, uh, and pull down 68? So those are the little things that you, gotta kinda, you have to determine. In this particular situation, we could do a 31 split down the middle and pull down 68. But the issue with that is, is that we'd end up with four cuts and we only need three windows of that size so for this time we're going to go ahead and measure out 68 inches uh from the from the film handler and then we're going to measure down to 31. so just so i can show you guys the film handler does have this uh measuring i mean measure this tape measure right here so we have the uh the cutter here you guys have never used it you just basically mark it up there's a there's a tab right there and just mark it up with the uh measurement and then go ahead and lock it in. Just twist it and lock it in. So this first cut is going to be a 31 by 68. The actual measurement of the glass, we give ourselves an inch buffer on each side. So the actual measurement is probably 67 by 30. So we cut an inch longer and then we give an inch on both ends because that way it gives us a half an inch wiggle room. Um, that way... If this cut gets off or if we cut it just a little shy, uh, we have some working room. Um, you, if you cut it exactly, you don't want to cut it exactly because not, not, every, not every window is exactly square. So the way that we do it is that we'll clean the glass, we'll install, and we'll line up the top in one side. And as long as those are straight and don't have any light gaps, we'll squeegee it out and then trim the side and the bottom. Sometimes it's not really exactly square, it's slightly off. So one side has a gap, so then you kind of have to just line up the top and then cut the, the sides and the bottom. So always give yourself a little bit more room. Zachary put a piece of tape right here. Basically, we're measuring from the top uh, portion of the film handler to the bottom, to right here, to 31. And that's going to give us our marker and how far we pull the film down. Uh, 68, we're good. So you just want to make sure the film gets fed through the slitter here, and then just pull straight down. As you're pulling here, notice that the film does start to bunch up. So if that's the case, just kind of pull it out so it doesn't bunch up and get crunched right up there as you're pulling. And just pull down nice and straight, nice and easy, until you get to that marker right there. And all you have to do is swing the swing arm down, boom, just like that. And uh, this is going to be the excess. You can go ahead and throw that away. No issues, no problems. Razor blade, let the razor blade do the work. Start the cut, and that's the beautiful thing about uh, the film handler. I can just go ahead and cut this whole piece of film. No worries, no problem. Now what we're gonna do is, because we, we are gonna reverse roll this, um, if you can hold on to that side like what we did before. Um, what I'm gonna do is double check which side the liner is. If, it's, if you fold it over and it slides, that's liner to liner. If you fold it over and it's six, it's film to film. So this is just like an automotive reverse roll, so we're gonna we're going to roll it with the liner side in. So what I'll start to do is I'll just start to roll it just like so. So I get to about here. We're both going to lift the arm up. And then that way I can kind of catch up with it. it does get a little, a little bit of use getting used to slicing film like this and rolling film like this. But uh, just take your time. Practice. You'll get it biggest thing is not to crunch the film if you can get me the tape the proper tape so this job isn't until friday so we're just going to pre-cut the film now 
Um, you do want to kind of keep it a little bit loose. You don't want to keep it too, too tight because you don't want the liner separating from, uh, from the film prematurely. Uh, we do have, like I said, our tape with the pre-designed uh, measurements on there. We're just going to go ahead and throw it on there just like that. So this is a 31 by 68, and this is a count of three. So this is one. So we're going to do the same thing two more times. What I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how we're going to do the exact same thing, but just put it, roll it right in here. That way you're able to pull out one at a time when, once you get to the job site. Uh, just like before, rinse and repeat. Cut it again. Is the knife, Zachary? Oh, thank you. Uh, take the top uh, in the top of the film. In the top box, yeah, yeah. So what we're doing here is that once we're moving the film, uh, that's the box that the film comes in. That's the top of the box. So what I usually do is I just put all the pieces in the top, and then I bring all the film, and then that way. That way you have spare film and you're good to go. So that's how I keep it organized and keep all the boxes together. Cut number two. See, I want to kind of fold, so just make sure to keep the keep the tight taut, the top taut. You hold on onto it, and let go. If you can get me that other roll. So this is the same roll, same dimensions. There's three of them, so we're keeping them all together. Roll them up. And what you can do is you can just go ahead and kind of torpedo it and tight, and you can twist this to tighten it up. You don't want to go too, too tight, just small enough, smaller than the diameter of the first roll. And uh, just roll it in, hold that. Notice how the film is rolled out, like, you know, like the proper way with toilet paper, out, up and over. I'm gonna roll the same thing and put the film the exact same way into the original tube. Now tighten it up. Opa. And that tape is loosening. Boom. That way, <clears throat> no matter if it's one, two, three, four, five, it doesn't matter. Um, what you'll be able to do is go ahead and twist in here. And then you can go ahead and tighten it and make it a little bit smaller than the outside roll and just pull out one at a time. Makes it very, very convenient, very easy in regards to uh, flat glass installations. That's number two. Make sure you're keeping track of the, uh, the cut sheet, making sure you're keeping track of what you're cutting so that you don't overcut. So we've done two so far, just give it a little tally. Where are we? That's one, boom. So we need one more of this dimensions. Oh, what's going on guys? 13 of us, nice. Last one, same as the other two. It's a lot of rinse and repeat once you kind of get the basic fundamentals of how to do it. Boom, just like that. If anyone does, uh, if anyone knows any better tricks on how to roll this, because I have Zach with me, so... I have a second hand. I've seen people take this and throw it sideways um, and then kind of repinch it back in the arm so that they can roll it. Uh, but yeah, you just kind of got to kind of do your best <laughs> and don't drop it. Try to roll it this way. Hey. This side of my film handle it doesn't doesn't hold as well. Zachary, would you mind? Zachary, sir, would you mind?
I got to check the the uh, the vinyl. Or I don't know if this bar bent a little bit, but this side doesn't hold as well as that side. So, you got that? Just hold that film right there. We're just gonna roll it one more time. Yeah, it's the last one. And since these are what are these sliders? What? These windows. I believe so. You measured it. Yeah. Okay, so these are sliders. And you can also turn it that way. Makes it easy also. Um, so especially with sliders or big windows like this. Traffic. Sliders and big windows like this, the drop technique is is ideal. Way better. There is the the two man method where you uh, thank you, sir. You can work on. You can grab me the other two. There is the two man method where one holds it and then you peel and then move. You can do that, uh, but the reverse roll method is ideal, especially if you're a solo installer. Just tightening them up, bringing them in. Uh, which, way do you, which way do you have it? There you go. Boom. So that's done. And now we have uh, three 31 by 68s in one nice tube. And again, once you get to the job site, clean the windows, you can pull one out, do the install, do the next one. It's much better than I've seen people like layer all four, all three of them and then roll all of them together. You can't pull them all out at the same time. I mean, one at a time at that point. So. Oh, wow. And we'll just try to square those up. Square that up at the end. I think we're going to have to retighten one of the other ones. Just make sure it doesn't smash. All right. So that's three. Six more to go. Next dimensions. We have uh, 47 by 68. And then we have two 44 by 88. And then... 344 by 90. So that's the long runs where we're going to lose. We're going to lose a solid one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven, eight, 28. In, oh, yes. Uh, 28 inches. So with the measurements that we have, probably a better cut might have been because this is this is a pretty good chunk that we're going to be here. So we're going to have this as spare and we'll use it. Not on this job, but we'll be able to use it at a, at a future job with maybe smaller windows. Um, so 72 is good, but I think if we had a 48-inch roll instead, we'd be able to uh, have minimized the amount of waste. So always double-check and make sure whether it's going to be a 48, whether it's going to be a 60, a 72, um, which one's going to be most effective and most efficient with film. That's the most important thing, efficiency. Um, all right, so let's set it up. 68 is the same. We've done it for the other three, but then we're going to change it to 47 instead of 31. Slightly bigger window. Take my marker tape, measuring tape straight down. 47 exactly. What a lot of people do is they'll put it right in line here and line it and run it with the line of the, uh, of the you're in the way of the camera, in the line with the ladder. But it's actually diagonal, so you want to make sure you're straight up and down. It's like an OCD thing for me. It's really probably only off by maybe a quarter of an inch if you do it diagonally, but yeah. Forty-seven by sixty-eight. Okay. Same thing we've been doing, but now we're going to pull straight down to forty-seven. Boom. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. It's all the same processes, just maybe a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller in regards to uh, how you handle it. Uh, yes, sir. You can hold it like this or exactly where you can turn it. 
we can turn it just to keep it flat. That way we can avoid any, any creasing of the film. Light creasing is okay because that can get, can get worked out. Um, obviously you won't avoid any heavy creases or crimps. Turn this way. There you go. You always, you always want to keep your angle open to the camera. All right. Now this is just the one cut, one one film. If you can grab me the tape, sir. I don't think I touched it. Rolling it up. Like I said, I like to keep it loose. You know, two, three fingers. Too, too tight. Like I said, it will, the liner will start to separate from the film. And, uh, and I don't know if it could. It could potentially ruin your installation. It won't look very good either. That's four. You got five more to go. What's next, sir? Uh, how many 90s are there? Just the one? And there's two 88s. It doesn't matter. Um, let's do the 44 by 90 because the math is easy. Three of those? Yep. Three of those. Okay. So this is interesting. Maybe I should move you guys forward. Are you guys good? I feel like it's angled a little bit. Okay, so the next measurement is 44 by 90, okay? So from here to the floor is only 72 inches. So how do I pull 90? I can I could put a tarp down, and I could pull 90 all the way, and then you end up having some film that will drag on the, uh, on the ground, potentially crimping or marring the film and maybe ruining it. Who knows? Ruining might be a little over aggressive. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a method where you just basically pull half and mark it. Our width is 44. And we're going to go to 90. Just want to double check that we're still, as we're rolling, the film could shift ever so slightly left and right. Within an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch is fine. Any more than that, that's a little bit too much leniency. Thank you, sir. So 90 inches won't hit the ground. So I'm just what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop it in half and go 45. 45 times 2 is 90. 90 divided by 2 is 45. Catch my drift. So basically, we're going to pull halfway. Remember how we did before when we did the twos? I want you to hold this side because this will be spare film that we'll put away for a future project. So with this, what you're going to need is two pieces of tape. Oh, Jesus, that scared me. One tape to mark your halfway point, and then a second piece of tape. I'm going to show you guys what to do with that so that you know where to pull down the second time around. It'll make more sense when you guys see it. Put that to the outside so you can use it. Can't put it here because the film will be there, and then you can't grab it because the film's in your way. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed it through the slitter, double check to make sure the film is unbinding, and we're going to pull straight down, nice and easy, and we're going to pull until we hit the top of our marker. Now, at this point, we have pulled 45 inches. We need, we need 90, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of tape. Where the tape is marked, go straight up, and what you're going to do is you're just going to line it, and you're going to line it on top where you would cut the film if you were cutting it, right on top. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, roll that one liner side out. Backwards. Yeah. Uh, you gonna be able to do it? Hold on. I'm rolling this liner side out because we're saving it for later. And liner side out will help protect the film. There you go. So this is the side I'm using right here. This side is going to end up being spare film. It doesn't have to be super tight, just tight enough so that it's not going to fall out of your hands. Got it? Cool. Okay.
Okay, we're halfway done. From here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull down the film again. This is your marker for your halfway. You're gonna pull this, this tape in line with this tape and that gives you your 90. Pull straight down. Keep going. Put the film on the outside. One more. So that's lined up here. Once you get to that point, drop this arm down because wiggling it back and forth, uh, you could potentially pull the film down even more without even realizing. And then just go ahead and roll it up. It's a lot easier to roll up the film this way, up and down versus side to side like you saw me earlier, but what can you do? I keep touching my mic because usually that's where I put my uh, my awful blade. I'm gonna slide this out. Which one was this one? 44 by 90. All right, tape on there. Now we're good to go. There's three of them. Three count. Three count. Um, let's tighten this up. Can you can you handle this as a big roll? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just instead of slicing it. I don't know. Ninety. You could get sliders, but sliders aren't twenty-seven inches. I would just slice it. Just keep going. Um. 44, 28 inches, so 28 by 90. So this is spare film that I could potentially use on a future project. Um, where is the tape? Here it is. Not too tight, not too tight. Yeah, loosen it up. Just like that. And hold on to that. So it will be potentially for a future project, maybe some smaller windows. Who knows? We'll see. If not, then um, that's our learning lesson to make sure that we buy the right size film so that we don't waste money. Right? Because if I can't use that film, it's just a waste of money. Uh, 28 by 93. So I'm marking, I'm marking just like I would mark if I was doing uh, these windows for an installation, but I'm just going to mark it and then I'm going to put it in and then that way I'll mark it on the box as well as like spare film. So backup film. Just like that. And we'll do the same thing, but every other one, just put it right there. That's quantity one and we need three of them, three of them. All right, so two more, and then uh, two more, and then we'll be done. There we go. Easy. There we go. Turn here, if you wouldn't mind. Perfect. Perfect. What do you want to do from that side? Just be careful because look, it tapers, yeah? You, you, that's that's why you're having trouble because you, you start it on the right side. Just once you roll it, pull it out. And that way you won't be binding with the ladder. Tighten her up. Could you do this at the job? Yes but it does it definitely makes it a little bit longer for the installation cuz you know we're here right on 30 minutes 45 minutes but that's another 30 or 45 minutes that that you don't have to be there plus we're cutting this go pull uh, we're cutting this I'll say again see stand for as you're pulling down there you go so we're cutting this in our free time when we don't have uh, when we don't have anything to do easy let it drop Tell me when we're in line. Good. good. So 
So this is a much better uh, use of our time because we're not doing anything right now anyway, so we might as well pre-cut. Because then the 45 minutes, we can have 45 extra minutes or an extra hour that we can go do another estimate, that we can go uh, spend, uh, spend more time at another installation, anything. So... The finite thing here is time. I want to be able to to efficiently maximize your time. Time management. Good. Just roll it up and insert it like the others. Boom. If you guys haven't noticed, I, you know, I, I'm more known for automotive, but auto has been uh, just going a little slow this year. So we got to make adjustments and, and roll with it. So we've been doing a lot more flat glass estimates. What the hell did I do here? Been doing a lot more flat glass estimates and uh, just doing a lot more jobs. So. Oh my gosh, I totally did something to this thing. There we go, give me a hand, will you? Give me a hand, will you? Hold on to this. Where my hand is. So this is a perfect reason to make sure that the film is tight before you insert it, because now it's loose <laughs> and now it won't come out. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to, there it is. There it is. Boom. So you see that? It's not very conducive. It makes it harder to roll into each other. So make sure the film doesn't torpedo on you. Make the film smaller than what you're putting it in. That way it fits no problem. Hold it. And don't let it go until you're all the way in. Boom. Easy. That's two. One more. Just to let you know, Zachary has been crushing it lately. Zachary now uh, runs and does estimates. He does uh, solo installs. He's been crushing. He crushed. Uh, he booked a uh, a 205 square foot installation for a home in Clearwater. So that's amazing. He's doing great. You good? Step back and it'll help. There you go. Once you get the first one. Just manage it from the sides. Yep, grab it right there. There we go. There are the methods. I'll show you guys another method for you can just pull straight out of the box using uh, tarps and just cutting straight out of the box. In case you uh, you don't have a film handler, if you guys looking for a film handler. Um, they run about 850 and then another decent six foot ladder will run you about another hundred bucks, 120 bucks or something like that. So the film handler and the ladder, you're about a thousand dollars in into it. Uh, but it's worth absolutely every penny, absolutely every penny. Good. If it's super loose from the beginning, it makes it really hard to, t to tighten. Ready?
So you bunch in here, so you're just holding it. You good? More? Hold on. There you go. Once you roll that up and put it into that tube, get another piece of blue tape and write spare film. That way we know it's not for this project. Do the knife. Almost done. Actually, this is the Clearwater project, right? Yeah, yeah this is, yeah. So this is the project that Zachary closed on. Um, so we were able to go ahead and uh, pick up film for the project. Heck, we closed it this morning. We we're, we're lucky enough that we're with about an hour outside of Largo. So SolarGuard has a facility there, so we're able to go ahead and just uh, pick up and and uh, get the film in and uh, get the jobs done a little sooner. So this is three, and we're done with this one. All right, seven total pieces of film, two more to go. Imagine I didn't hit live, live. <laughs> I'll check the chats afterwards, guys. We'll sit and talk in chitty chat. Uh, 90, 88. 88 is 44. Is that... All right, spare yes. How do we do with the measuring tape? Put it up here. Everything has a place. This measurement measurement is just a couple inches shy of the other one, so. All right, Zachary, almost done. That's a spare, yes. See how it's punching right there? Because you lift on one side more and just kind of like let it fall naturally. Thank you, sir. This is the first one, right? Yeah. Yeah, because we don't have the tape on there. Okay. Eighty-eight. Twenty-eight by eighty-eight. Mm-hmm. 
All right, last one. Yeah. Yeah, just because it's different. Oh. Yes. So if you guys are curious what we're doing, I don't know if I mentioned it. So we're just getting some painter's tape and we're marking it. We're going to mark uh, the dimensions of the film, the quantity amount. So it's going to be 44. No, it's not. It's going to be 28 by 88, quantity 2. And then I'm also going to write on another piece of tape, spare film. That way I know that this film is not for this project, but in the future when we do use and sell another PureView 35, then, uh, uh, then we could potentially use that film in the future for an installation. Maybe French panes or something. I don't know. I don't know. Last piece of film. This happens to be the biggest project I think Zach's closed on it, too. We were right around uh, $2,600 for yeah. this project. Pretty good. Pretty good. Technically, I'm a sport because they have another part they're about to approve after we do their measurements. Sunroom? What was it? Art room. Oh, nice. It's got like 16 pieces in Oh, even better. They just want a different, they just want a darker shade. So instead of going and mix matching, I hate doing that. So I told him we would just, so they wanted us to come back out for another estimate. I like, already did the estimate. So they look at the shades again. I was like, well, why don't we just come do this install? We should look at the shades. Oh, there you go. I mean, unless you want me to book another estimate or something. No, yeah, no. See. see, so what Zach's talking about here is that he went out to the estimate, and uh, and they were iffy on a portion of the house. They were for sure on some, iffy on the rest. So what Zach did is instead of just taking the measurements of the of the job we're gonna do, he went ahead and just measured everything, right? And the great thing about TinWiz is that you can portion out certain sections as long as you, as long as you categorize it correctly, you can cut out certain sections and only do portions of the house. Um, so that way, oh, let's pull. I'm sorry. That way, Zachary doesn't have to uh, doesn't have to go back out uh, to do a second estimate for the other portion. He's just he's already done it now. So that once we finish this project, and they're like, ah, you know what? Let's go ahead and go ahead and move forward with the uh, with the other portion that we decided we wanted to do. At that point, uh, at that point, um, we save ourselves a trip and we already have all the information. We go into TintWiz, we select our film, send a proposal out, get it approved. See, so you see the trend that there's always, we're trying to use our time efficiently, especially in a smaller outfit. It's only me and Zach, that's it. You know, so we both do the estimates, we both do the installs, we're both doing cars here, so we're, we're spread pretty thin. So we wanna make sure that, um, that we're not wasting any time in maximizing profits. So, and this is hand cut, I mean, this is cutting the film and prepping it for the job. But there's a lot more steps in regards to flat glass way before this. We got to get to the estimate. Once we're at the estimate, we have to measure every or the scope of the work, every single piece of window, and the measurements have to be right. You cannot mess it up, right? Because when you go with your measurements and they're inputted into TintWiz, then that's the obviously that's the information that you can use when you hand cut it or when you cut out the film. Um, so if your measurements are off, then the whole thing gets thrown off. So Measurements have to be on. Once you have the measurements, you input it into TintWiz, and then you're able to uh, you're able to go ahead and put together a proposal, do the sales. Once you close the job, now you have to determine. This is the most important thing: how many linear feet are you going to need for that job? That's the most important thing. So, for example, a five foot wide or sixty inch by one hundred feet is five hundred square feet, right? And let's just say your job is 496 square feet. And you're like, perfect. I just need a 100-foot roll of 60-inch wide. Well, 
that doesn't include waste. That doesn't account for waste. So you got to you got to count linear feet in regards to that I used to do total square footage doesn't work like that because you could end up at a job with less um, with not enough film because you weren't accounting for waste. So that's the most important thing, determining whether a 72 or so we, we usually work with 72s or 60s. Um, but in the rare case where like maybe all of them are like 47, 46, 45, then maybe we just grab a 45, 48 inch roll instead and save ourselves the, the waste. Um, but that's super important. Why? Because when you order your film, we order our film just enough for the, the project. We're, we're slowly building up our, our inventory and such. But just like this, look at this. Look at that. All the film is cut already. And we had about 13 inches, 13 inches left on this roll. And that's it. So that was pretty much a perfect, a perfect purchase on Zach's part. Zach's the one that uh, did the purchase. But very minimal waste. And you're good to go. Uh, we do have spare film. So let me show you guys. This is a different project we have later on this week. So we have the roll that the film came on. We have all our film for that project already pre-cut. We have the, the uh, cut sheet. So this tells us the clients and the dimensions and everything else like that. So we know what project this is for. And then we have a spare box of film, same film, spare box of film in the event that we mess up one of these, these pre-cut install for the installs, we can just hand cut uh, real quickly straight out of the box on site for just like maybe one window, you know, if we end up messing up. It's too hot. Check, check, check. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Hear me. God, it's been a minute since I've been on here. So hopefully the audio was good. Sorry about that. Um, it looks like I had an overheating issue on the GoPro. It said it, it gave me a temperature reading. So I'm assuming it overheated. So sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I hope you guys like that one let's see here uh what's happening everyone what's going on z customs thank you very much burner account what's up shut up and twerk noah <laughs> uh daniel reyna with the 20 dollars super chat thank you so much definitely appreciate that hey pat can you briefly explain how to uh, how you market to accurate to acquire students for a tink class or promote a tink class thank you um I'm still working on that, to be honest. I'm still working on that. I put, uh, I'm doing a, a co-op with a, uh, with a shop out of Montgomery, Alabama, and we've been doing the promos for three weeks now. Haven't had a single person sign up. So I wish I had a better answer for you. Um, promote, get some, uh, get some promotional materials and just promote the hell out of it throughout the, the tent groups. I mean, that's all I could pretty much say. Uh, Jake Grifford, hey Patrick, are you still offering classes? Yes, uh, we do have an October class in Montgomery, Alabama, and then we have we are setting up for a November class because the weather's going to be a lot cooler in the shop, which means that it's not going to be uh, a pain in the ass for people. What percentage is good for flat class on a house? Um, that's a, a relative term, so flat class. It's all up to the client, right? Most common is like fifteen percent, fifteen to twenty percent. Um, if you go five percent, it's going to be it's going to be a, uh, on the glass, a cave. Blow it out. Yes. Also, too, depends on the glass. Good job, Zachary. Um, you can't go too dark on certain films. Dual, dual pane glass um, that's maybe neutral, that's too dark. Uh, the absorption rate would be too high, and you can break the glass. So uh, check with film glass. Do the film glass chart from your manufacturer, and also just double-check with your clients, see what they, what they like. Uh, how much square footage are you getting on this job? Dollar per square foot. So uh, the way we're working with our silvers, we're running it at eight 
Um, our dual reflectives were running at a nine, and then our ceramics were running at 13. So how do you get cut sheets? Uh, the cut sheets are over at TintWiz. If you go into the project, right, and right above them, uh, once you go into the project and you have all the measurements already in there, um, right above the measurements, it says sheet, and you click on that, and you can either download a PDF or you can print it. That's the cut sheet. That's the cut sheet I'm talking about. Jake Griffith says audio is good here. Good. It better be. It's a freaking $500 microphone <laughs> that I don't ever use. Here in Central California, I'm charging $7 to $10 per square foot. I always charge more if I have to climb a ladder or, or two-level installation where I have to use scaffolding. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, it kind of just depends. Uh, I We've been at a between a 12.5% to 15% film cost for flat glass. It's a really sweet. It's a really nice sweet spot. Um, and usually, usually installations average minimum a thousand dollars for an install. And I'm talking, what's the, what's the Rachel gig? How many square feet do you think? Yeah. A hundred. Yeah. Like a hundred or something. I can lay, uh, I can lay 150 an hour and that's like with breaking the scaffolding and that's not pre-cutting. So, um, while we pre-cut, I could probably get in and out of there. 20 to 30 minutes a window and that's taking my time so um so three four hours for 1100 bucks that's pretty solid but especially once i start sending zach out by himself and he's doing an install i'm doing an install then that way we can uh, start churning an income big shout out to you down right now definitely appreciate the 20 dollars super chat um it'll pay for lunch for uh for zachary and i one day thank you <laughs> How's the shop going? Uh, Tony Gray, the shop's, the shop's going okay. Um, I did not have a big boost. Um, what is that TikTok? You got to turn that off before I get demonetized. Oh, it's me? You're watching me? Oh, that's weird. Go, into this, go in there if you're going to watch me. Oh. <laughs> um, so the, 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 I moved from an hour away here. So uh, while I have an established Google My Business, and I have great reviews and things of that nature, no one knows me. So automotive side has been very slow. Uh, but we've been getting through it. And um, and Zachary's been helping me out with organiz organizing being so that I can focus on the installation portion while he takes care of the phone calls and, and some of the front office stuff while also assisting and installing with with um, automotive and flat when he can. Um, but we've just we've just been focusing a little bit more on flat class since automotive has just uh, has just been a little slow for us. Um, the first year, you know, growing pains first year. Sometimes you, you knock it out of the park, you open up in spring and you're booked five weeks in advance. And sometimes you're barely booked a week in advance and you're wondering, you're wondering how, where the money's going to come and if you're going to pay your bills or if you're going to have to fire your, your one employee. Joking. It's an ongoing joke I have with him. Um, but besides that, um, I guess that's pretty much it, guys. So... Uh, flat glass. Oh, big shout out to our sponsor for this live stream, TintWiz. Check him out, tintwiz.com, the uh, number one CRM suite for the window tinting industry. Awesome stuff. If you guys have never checked it out, don't forget there is a free 30 day trial um, at sign up available for download on iOS and Android as well. Um, are you doing any paid ads? Tony, I don't do any paid ads. Uh, one of my sponsors, actually, TintMob, takes care of all my SEOs and lead generations. Um, the way that it works is that we set up, like I'm in Spring Hill, so we set up Spring Hill window tinting. Um, he sets up a website. He gets he actually was able to integrate TintWiz into the website as well, so they can fill out information and goes right into my TintWiz lead generator. Um, and I'll be able to track where the leads are coming from. We actually have one for automotive, and we have one for flat within Spring Hill. We have five websites, actually. So three of them are automotive. One's in Largo, Clearwater, and Spring Hill for automotive and then we have one in clearwater and spring hill for flat glass specifically flat glass um so we have five different websites running right now um it's the only form i don't i don't pay for 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 facebook ads i don't pay for google google keyword business keyword i don't even know the fucking name of it um it doesn't matter i don't pay for any of it right uh tent tent mob takes care of all my uh of all my lead generation and they've been doing a kick-ass job and uh the flat class sites actually just went live i think last week or the week before and we've been busy with flat class so um so things are working definitely working all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and log out uh we are 
past or we're an hour past i didn't even realize what time we were we were uh getting started so i'm gonna head out of here thank you very much guys if you uh if you like it give it give it all the likes and thumbs and all that shit so